Please welcome Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> It's great that you look like a teenager. Well, I'm not a teenager at all, but I will have to say, I'm so, you know how people say I'm so happy to see you. I really am. I was thinking about you. I was so excited to see you that I wore your jacket running on the beach. Wow. Oh, yes. Just to remind me I was coming. It's so great. You did such a great job at the Oscars. Oh, thank you. Such a great job. Very sweet. I really do appreciate no, that. No, I want to know, were you nervous at all? You seem so darn calm. I wasn't. I don't know why I wasn't nervous. I'm honestly more nervous about having you here than I am you about that. You are not. Her. You are I not. I swear, I really am. I really yeah. am. <laughs> but you, you don't, you don't get not any tinge of like, here we go. I don't know what it is or why, but I have the opposite of that. Yeah, I did. You don't get nervous though, do you? And I had a couple butterflies coming out here. You did. Wow. Yeah, I'm yeah. surprised at just, that. Just, just, you know, not like, but just a couple of little. I'm, I'm on, on, I'm on the Jimmy Kimmel show. Hello. <laughs> I'm on the Jimmy Kimmel show. Well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. You are, um, uh, do you people ever like, especially now, you know, you've lost a lot of weight. You, do people not believe you're you ever? Well, a couple of times I've had situations where I was, I, I, listen, I was opening my school in South Africa mm -hmm. and I had brought 200 friends from the United States for that celebration. And my assistant forgot my passport. <laughs> and I am stuck on the tarmac for seven and a half hours, literally waiting on somebody to come and release me. Now, they knew who I was because they were coming to take pictures with me. Like, Oprah, we want the picture with you. <laughs> Oprah, we want the picture. And then they would say, he'll be here, ma'am. He's coming in a half hour. No, ma'am, I'm so sorry. He's at a funeral. He's at a funeral. It's his brother, ma'am. It's going to be a very long funeral. The passport guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah the passport guy. So wow. I was sitting on the tarmac literally in Sun City. So it wasn't like Joburg, big airport. It's just a little, like one guy in the booth for the passports. And he is telling me that he can't let me out. But he's what? bringing all of his friends to take pictures. <laughs> When the plane took off, did you run over your assistant? No, I did no. not. <laughs> no, I did not. Libby, you know, I didn't even, she said, oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot your passport. I wasn't even blaming her, because I should have remembered my passport, too. But then, after the seventh hour, I was like, Libby, you should have remembered that passport. <laughs> oh, no, Libby, what about May I passport? show you something? Because, what? and this is, I, this is not a, a joke of any kind, I carry this. I have a special file for all my cards and all that kind of stuff, my passport, all that stuff. Yeah. But the first photograph in my phone that I carry in case I, there's, I get in a pinch of some kind is this, because I figure that if the people don't know who I am... That's funny. I will, I will see I know what for. Well, let me just say, that's not going to work for anyway, you. Now, I'm, yeah, now, now I fear it's not going to work. Yeah. Another time, I was walking my dog uh, in Chicago. So I was walking my dog, Sadie, in Chicago, and I had, like, you know, no hair and makeup on. I was just walking down the street, and this guy goes, hey, you look like Oprah Winfrey. And I didn't say anything. And he said, I said, you look like Oprah Winfrey. And I turned around and said, I am Oprah Winfrey. And he said, you wish. Now that's a nice compliment. <laughs> <laughs> You wish. Do you miss a studio audience? Do you miss being, because I noticed on your special, you did it in front of a studio audience. I don't recall you doing that for quite some time. I haven't done it for 13 years. It's 13 years since the Oprah show ended this wow. May. And when I walked into the studio to do that, I had one of those, it was like triggered in a very nice way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I felt like, first of all, the audience, and having all the cameras and knowing that you were doing this for broadcast television was really, it was, it was really a, a good, good thing. It felt good. Um, I know you could it have done like this. It felt like getting on a bicycle. That like, I like I the idea that you did it here at ABC because you don't do much on broadcast no, television. I haven't, no, I haven't done a lot on broadcast What was it about this particular topic that made you go, I must talk about this in a primetime situation? Well, I have had the experience of a lifetime because 
back in 2021, I had my knees done. Anybody here ever had their knees done? Woo! Woo! Let's testify. <laughs> So for four years, I was in pain every time I walked down a hill and I was getting those injections in the knees, the steroid injections. But as you know, if you continue to get them, it actually gets worse. You don't improve, you get worse. So I decided to have my knees done. And let me tell you, life changed. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> life changed after that. And when you first come home, I could not lift my leg off the bed. I couldn't move my foot. And I made a vow that if God, God, if you let me walk again, I promise I will get myself in shape. I promise I will use my body to the, to the highest uh, possible good for myself and my wow. health. And that's how it all started. So I started, like, you know, not being able to... First of all, you start out with a walker. Mm -hmm. uh, which is very limiting. And then I moved from walker to crutches to cane. And then every day I would just try to do a couple more feet, a couple more feet, a couple more feet until I'd gotten up to a mile. And the first time I did a mile, it took me almost two hours to finish a mile. And every day I would try to do a little more and a little more. And I was not eating past four o'clock and uh -huh. watching all the right meals. And I felt like I had to do it my way and had to prove that I could do it on my own. Even though I was hearing all along people talking about the medications, I felt like, I've got to do it. Right, yeah. You know? And um, I did a show uh, or uh, a conversation on OprahDaily.com where I do my, a lot of my work and stories. It's Oprah Magazine turned digital. And I talked to a lot of doctors who, for the first time, I got when they said obesity is a disease. Obesity is a disease. It is not a disease for everybody who's overweight. It is a disease if you carry the gene or the propensity for the adipose gene, which is the fat gene. So not everybody who overdrinks is an alcoholic. But if you have the gene for it, you develop alcoholism. It is the same thing with people who have obesity. Not everybody who eats a lot and shows up with extra weight has that gene or carries that propensity. But if, because it's a big spectrum, it's a spectrum, just like everything is a spectrum. So, but if you do carry it, you will always, always put the weight back on. And so when I realized that, you've seen, you all have seen, I've been in the struggle, I've been in the storm of Losing the weight, gaining it back, losing the weight, gaining it back. And what I realized when I listened to what the doctor said, that you are always going to put it back on and it's like holding your breath underwater mm. and trying not to rise. You're always going to rise. When you talk to... Does God ever call you and ask you for stuff? No, God no. doesn't. <laughs> does God doesn't call and ask me for stuff. No. But I will say this. I have an extra spare bedroom for Jesus. And you do. <laughs> Oprah is here. She's so got a bedroom for Jesus, everybody. Oh, 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 bro, I hope you don't mind. I'd like to share a, a photo uh, that we found. Do you remember uh, oh this gosh. photo? This is a, you're working at a radio station, right? Oh, my gosh. How old are you here? I am 16 or 17. 16 or 17. What yes. radio station were you working at? WVOL Radio. <laughs> WVOL in Nashville. Nashville. In Nashville. Yes, I was out on the street doing some, I don't remember. This is the guy this who guy. invented Ozempic. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing all right. Uh, no, I used to do that since I, I got that job when I was 16 years old. So I would be 16, 17, or 18. I kept it from 16 to 19. And then at 19, I got a call from my local television news anchor. Uh, Chris Clark, who said, are you interested, would you be interested in doing television? And I said, I don't know if my dad's going to let me, because I was still, <laughs> I was still a sophomore in college. I don't know if my dad's going to let me. They asked me to do the 10 o'clock news, and my dad was like, you have to be home by 11. So, <laughs> no exaggeration. He would be like, the news is over 10.30, you better be home by 11. So that's how it all started for me. That's unbelievable. You know, by the way, that's exactly how it started for me, except for the part where somebody wanted me to be on TV. I was 16 years old, and I started 
doing yes. radio interviews for a local radio station. It's priceless, isn't it? It in is. In terms of what you learn about other people and how you learn how to listen and pay attention. Yeah, it's really great. You don't even know you're learning at the time. You, you think don't. you're doing a job when you're really learning. I was. How, how much were you? How much did you make? Nothing. I did it for free. Zero dollars. I got a hundred dollars. You got. <laughs> well, you've, that established a, a <laughs> I theme. I did it for $100. I'd been working in my dad's store for nothing, so that was my first paying job. I do want to wish you a happy birthday in person. You turned 70 in January, which yes. is a was there a, Was there a huge blowout bash that we don't know about? No, there wasn't. There was not. No, I thought about it. I wanted to, I had so much pressure. All my friends, Gail, oh my gosh, Ava, Maria. Maria was like, well, we have to do something. We have to do something. And I was originally, I was going to do, I thought I was jogging one day. So, so now I don't do just one thing. I do multiple things. So I run on the beach or I run on land or I hike. So you do a lot of hiking. I do right? a yeah. lot of hiking. So I was really in the middle of a five mile jog. And I was listening to all of these this great disco music. I love listening to, I still listen to the really old stuff. Like, mm -hmm. Same here. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. OK, so and I was thinking, oh, this would be fun to have a dance party with all this old music. And so started planning that. And then I decided I really didn't want all the people. And then, <laughs> and then I thought, and Gail goes, dance party, that's great. And then I thought, well, what would I really like? I really love the woods. So what about a nice? Camping things in the woods. Let's do a. Let's go to the redwoods, but January 29th is kind of cold out there. Yeah, right. And so I couldn't find anybody who wanted to go camping <laughs> in the woods for. And then I wanted to go hiking in New Zealand. Couldn't find anybody to go hiking. Really? Yes. And so I ended up at home in my pajamas. Uh, wow. Yes. Yes. But well, that's kind of nice too, in some ways. It was nice. It was very nice. Yeah. You know what I was thinking about when you turned seventy, and this is how I think. I was thinking, oh my God, poor Stedman has to come up with a seventieth birthday gift for Oprah, which is a nightmare, honestly. I yeah. mean, right? Yeah. It's, it's what? What can he get? He you? actually did really good this year. What Normally, he he's not good, but he's not. <laughs> Mm, not, normally not, but this year he came up with a trip to Rwanda to see the gorillas. Oh well, that's a good. That's, that's a really very good, good right? Guy. Now and I got, he just now I a, gotta go. He had a <laughs> so he had a birthday I think very recently as well, right? Yeah, yeah. What do you? What did you get him? A sweet potato pie. <laughs> it was nice. I was nice. Was, was, was that like the cake? It was. It was a pie. He uh -huh. liked sweet, sweet potato pie. You know, black people like sweet potato. Uh huh. Y'all sure. like pumpkin. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so it was a sweet potato pie, and then I couldn't find a candle for it, so I put extra little sweet potatoes chopped on top, and then said, "Happy birthday." Did he to take? You. Did he take back the gorilla trip? No. no. <laughs> No, but we're not, we're really not big on birthdays. I think birthdays depend on how you were raised. So if you're raised in the how, were you, how were you raised? Big, big thing. Well, it wasn't like we, we didn't, you know, we didn't have a big party, but the family would gather and we'd have a cake and it was like a big deal. Oh, okay. Not yeah. a big deal for me. Not a big deal in your house. No, no, don't even act like it is. Yeah, no, in yeah. our house it was a big deal. We even celebrate half birthdays in our house and we sing happy birthday and have half of a cake. No. Yeah. <laughs> We no, don't. no, I didn't grow up that way. So it's not really that big of a deal to me. I felt so much pressure. I mean, at one point I was thinking, I, I just need to do something so everybody else can be happy. Right, yeah, yeah. no, you don't want that. But I did, then I decided the one thing about being 70 is you do what the hell you want. <laughs> Why did you, speaking of doing what the hell you want. Yes. Why did you, why did you quit Weight Watchers? I resign. This quit sounds so. Ugh. And yet, is that what happened, or I mean? It is. I decided uh -huh. that because this special was really important to me, and I wanted to be able to talk about whatever I want to talk about. And Weight Watchers is now in the business of being a weight health company that also administers drug medications for weight. I did not want. To have the appearance of any conflict of interest. I see. And so I resigned from the board and I gave, donated all of my shares to the National Museum of African American. Oh, I've History. been to that museum. That's Isn't a great right? museum. Yeah. And the so nobody can say, 
So nobody can say, oh, she's doing that special. She's promoting making money thing. and promoting her. No, you cannot say that. Did the people that. at Weight Watchers cry when you left? They almost did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would imagine they wouldn't be that they happy did. about They almost that. did. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. Oprah Winfrey is with us. Thank she's you. got a special on Monday night here on ABC. We'll be right back. We are back with Oprah Winfrey. On Monday night here on ABC and the next day on Hulu. And I hate to ask you for a favor, but I am going to ask you if you can help me with something. You need a favor? Yes, I do. Okay. It's something that has affected my life in a very negative way, really since I was, I think, born. It's been going on twice a year now, and I've had enough of it. It's called Daylight Saving Time. Have you heard of this? <laughs> So Congress finally voted, and they said, OK, we're going to stop with this changing the clocks twice a year. We're, it's, it's done. And for whatever reason, they're not finishing it off. Can you speak to somebody about this? I kind of like it. You do? I you do. You like changing the clock? I do. What could you like about that? I like about, what I like about it is it allows me to know that spring is really here. I was really excited. I'll call you and tell you it's here. <laughs> I, was, I was really excited to know, wow, we're going to get an extra hour. It's going to be lighter. You can stay out longer. You oh, don't like no, that transition? no, I shouldn't have brought it up. I've no, no, set no, the whole thing no, back now. You don't like that? No, I don't, because, like, my kids don't get up, and it's, you know, they're tired, and you can't get them to bed, and it just throws everything out of whack. So whatever. you want it to just stay one yeah, way the whole time? Day one. It Would, could be the way you like it. But I want it to stay that way. OK, I would work with you, Jimmy, if would... we could have it the way I like it. Yes, of course we could have it the way you like it. You would co-sponsor this bill. <laughs> no, don't you? Don't, you all don't like the extra hour? You don't like It's not having... an extra hour. It's just moved around, yeah. It's just, it's just faking us out, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Can I ask you about uh, various uh, rumors, uh, stories that uh, have not been confirmed by you personally? OK, what is it? Uh, there is a rumor uh, that has been published that your dogs are set to inherit $30 million when you pass away. Is that true? That is not true. <laughs> First of all, unfortunately, most of my dogs have also passed away. Did they leave you any money? No, they, they, they no? leave me a dime. <laughs> <laughs> they left me with medical bills is what they left me. Uh, no. No, OK. All right. Um, do you plan to be buried under the oak tree at your Montecito estate? Uh, no. OK. Um, I was. But you the were? I was going to be buried there, but the oak tree fell. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Not a nice thing. <laughs> During one of the big rainstorms oh. when the oak tree fell. So it's not, it's not the same. Is it true you were in negotiations to buy the LA Clippers? when they were for sale. That is true. And you wanted to buy the Clippers. Well, yes. <laughs> but yeah. not for the amount they sold for. Not. No. And it wasn't just me. I was, in nego I was negotiating with David Geffen. I oh, mean, wow. David Geffen and I were partners, OK? Oh, wow, that would have been something. Wouldn't maybe that be would, fun? They would have yeah. won, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> is it true that you thank Stevie Wonder for performing Happy Birthday at your 50th by giving him a Rolls Royce? I thought it was a Maybosh or something. Is that the same thing? <laughs> no, that's a different thing, but it's another thing, yeah. I think it's a Maybosh. You gave him that car? That, that's, he said he wanted it. <laughs> and, uh, he said he wanted it. He, no. He was probably kidding, no, right? He, I mean, he said he wanted he it. He wanted the car? He, and I was like, you're going to drive it? <laughs> And he sent me a video of him driving it. Yes, oh, he did. wow. Yes. Wow. He did. That is true. Does Oprah have an underground bunker? No. OK. Do you keep a whole octopus in the fridge on a regular basis? Yes. You do? Yes. Why? Stedman loves octopus. Oh, OK. OK. And he eats it that much, huh? Like for breakfast almost every day. That is a strange thing, isn't it? Yeah. And let me just tell you, when you open that refrigerator and there's that octopus just sitting there. It every is, time. It, every time. It's a, it's a gross out thing, yeah. Because it's got all the tentacles and the head and the little thing. It's, yeah, it's real. Wow, that's pretty, that's no, something No, and else. every morning when he's eating it, I said, I believe you're the only person 
who's having this for breakfast right now. Yeah. You know what it is? It's not just octopus, it's octopus and okra. As a combo? As a combo. He loves things that start with O. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is, right? That's so good. <laughs> that's so good. You, um... That was quick. Well, you know. Um, <laughs> You are going after this show. You are getting receiving uh, an honor at the, the Glad the Vanguard, Awards. The Vanguard. You're getting the Vanguard award, yes. award from Glad. Yes. Yes. And will you give a speech at this event? I'll say some words of thanks. Yes. He, how is it possible they've not already given you the Vanguard Award? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it has taken this long to get the Vanguard Award. I'm happy to be getting it tonight. May I ask, how many times a year do people offer to give you awards? It's a lot. A lot of it's them. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. And then you have to decide which ones. Yes, but you know, the thing is, what most people don't know about me is that I really, I have extroverted tendencies, but I really am an introvert. And I am happiest on a day when it's raining and I have six books to go through, and they're by the fireplace, and there's Sadie by my feet, and i am got a blanket. I'm happiest cocooning with myself. Is that what you tell them in the email when you say, I'm not coming <laughs> to take no, the award? No, and you never say, this is the thing, you never say no immediately. Oh. No, you don't. You don't. Okay. Unless it's a, like you absolutely know that you cannot do it, but you always give it just a little beat and say, "Well, let me look at my schedule or let me see oh, what's coming up." That remember that. Thank okay. You. That's a good tip. That's good. Yeah. Because no immediately just means. I'm gonna remember that the next time we ask you to come to the show. Yes. Do that. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey, everybody, and Oprah Special. Yeah.